Uh, we are here to present a use case of Apache Mesos and Calico in your company. Uh, and we are going to talk a little about the process that we did to make our Mesos cluster and how we end up using Calico as a network solution, how that brings security to our setup. And, uh, and we are also going to show you how we managed to use Calico to extend our data center to AWS, which is something that we've seen people trying or say that wanted to do, but uh, I haven't seen any presentation about that, so we will show you that. Yeah. And it's very interesting to be speaking right now because we saw a lot of talks going around things that we are touching here and that it's a production case. So. Well, first talk about us. Uh, my name is Acacio. It's hard to say that in English, but people don't usually understand. I am a keep it simple minded person. You give me a problem, I'll try to solve it in a simple way. Uh, I like to break things fast. I'm also a cook at home, and I am always traveling. Yeah, and uh, I'm passionate about challenges and like a lot to ride motorcycles. So if you like motorcycle, come to talk with me too. Uh, read a lot and the most are dead. And this is our personal life, who we are as a person. As such. So uh, we work in a Brazilian fintech company called uh, PagSeguro, which is um, some sort of, of gateway of payment. Uh, we also work with uh, uh, credit card machines. And we have this mission to provide innovative, simple and secure solutions uh, in financial services. Uh, and we are yeah, and, and that's a challenge in itself because uh, I don't know who here works with financial institutions or things like that. And to have, yeah, we are in the same team. And to have innovative solutions in this kind of environment is something very difficult because they are very straight and difficult to move things in new directions. So we have a lot of challenges there. Yes, we work for money. Lots of money. And, and that's not our money. That's someone else's money. That makes things a little more difficult. Yeah, and I don't know exactly here in US and around the world, but there in Brazil, we have lots of fintechs, lots of competitors. And every single thing that you do better than your competitor, you're going to get another <laughs> Uh, customer, you're going to get uh, more money. So it is important to get things done right. Yeah, and uh, our competitors are really big companies and institutions around the globe. So we need to have some differential from them. Uh, so the challenge. Um, we, we are going to talk about something that happened on uh, 2015, we had at that time a monolithic application that we, uh, uh, that everything was ru uh, running inside that black box, like big stuff. And it was going, it, it was getting harder to maintain the application, it was getting harder to uh, adding new features. So, we started talking about microservices and we started uh, talking about how do we run uh, in a simple way, in a better way, with all the features that the market were do was doing at that time. So we came with, the, with, the, with some research and then we, we came with Mesos. Yeah, and uh, that's the problem that I think you might get through some echo process, the cab, change the advisory board, the IT process. And it's something that is uh, trying to take care of security and change management and make, keep things stable. And I don't know if you, uh, you have passed through these problems uh, that's not specifically in the financial institution, but the hyper and the poor resource utilization, something that was happened there to us. 
too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, returning to the other, uh, do anyone here work with i2? Oh, you are. Oh, lucky you probably guys. you probably know <laughs> how good not <laughs> it is uh, to move fast. i2 is is something that was made to don't break and. We were planning to move fast, so it's the opposite what yeah. what we are trying to do. Uh, so, given this situation, I know that he, all of you know the solution. Yeah, misses. And but uh, this introduction is interesting because it is a change of paradigm, a way of that, that, that you think that you think and uh, inside our company we had to, we had these two distinct moments first moment where we had the first cluster kind of a proof of concept that grew in solution we we were um, victim of our own success and then here we hadn't calico yet and things was something messy the the, the, the usual port map that we see clusters running and the secret itself was nothing that we take too care in the level that we, we need to. Being, being honest, it was like a, a really poor setup. It yeah. was like we just install and let things happen and then we became uh, like surprised with how, how much applications we got running in two or three months. It was yeah. like... That's crazy. And then we start the second phase, uh, just doing things right. And then we saw that message itself and the networking challenge and security challenge was something real that we needed to take care of. And the second setup was the current setup we are running. And we are, have very good results about security and the, the whole process of delivering and so on. Yeah, at that time, the both security and network team uh, engaged on the project and then we decided to plan stuff and then, okay, we're going to, we, we want this kind of security, we want this kind of uh, feature in network, etc. So that's why we came with the, with the solution of Calico and um, especially not only Calico but the, the whole setup was uh, planned, it was like uh, we architected it to grow, we planned how the, the SLBs were going to, to work, etc. Uh, and then came network security. The security team told us, okay, we are a company that works with money, we need to have security, we need to have um, some isolation, we need to have um, some controls on who is going to give access to uh, that application or the other application. Um, we also came with some um, compliance uh, features that were needed, like we have PCI DSS uh, certification, so they told us, okay, if you wanna uh, uh, deploy an application with PCI here in this cluster, you need to follow this step. So we have lots of compliance stuff uh, to, to achieve. Uh, and that was a joint effort, as Acacio said before. Uh, we had the security guys working in the project, and we, we have them now working in the pipeline itself. So we were able to have a DevSecOps kind of thing running. And as we said, Mesos plus Calico is the perfect combination for safety and growth. Uh, I don't know if uh, some of you guys, I guess, that ma uh, mainly everybody here was in the previous presentation uh, where the guy told about the CNI, which was a way that we found to connect uh, our cluster to this solution. Uh, we were at that time running the a unified containerizer, and, and then we decided, okay, I need a layer of security, but it needs to comply with this. Just out of curiosity, who here already worked with Calico? Okay. We will go a little deeper, not too much, but any question, please use the final question time or ask us after the presentation. 
So, uh, Calico itself uh, has a very uh, good documentation. They are used in some setups, and uh, uh, it's this simple. Uh, the last talk talked about G uh, BGP, and it's the foundation that Calico uses to configure the whole thing. thing. And it was something very simple to use. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, as I told before, the whole setup was created and was planned to scale uh, like uh, horizontally. So we decided to, okay, any solutions needs to scale the same way as the cluster yeah. uh, and it needs to be um, deployable in any stuff that we needed to uh, put inside the cluster because uh, this is like a platform as a service uh, for us. It's a, a, it's a pass, so uh, we are adding features there. We are adding like uh, file storage and database as a service and stuff like that. So anything would be pluggable in the whole solution, not only on Mesos, but on all those, those parts of the solution. And, and one interesting thing that uh, I forgot to, to talk in the start is that uh, we are part of a bigger organization. We, PagSeguro is a part of uh, another bigger company called Wall, a, a very big media group in Brazil. And we have some other arms and under that umbrella. And we, for example, we have our own data centers. And we need to have a solution that scale not only inside one that data center instance, but across multiple data center instances and in a variety of environments using uh, bare-bone machines, using virtualization, and so on. So uh, this simple structure of Calico and this capacity for scale across data center was something that was very uh, unique and was a driver for the whole solution. Yeah, another feature that we found in Calico that was uh, good for us was that we can uh, run the same kind of protection and layer of security both in the developer machine and then on the development uh, environment and then on the Q&A uh, environment and into production. So we can like simulate every in every step what is going to happen in production uh, using the same tool, the same setup. And it's secure. Uh, I don't know how much of you know Portuguese, but PagSeguro is the best translation would be safe pay, safe payment or something like that. So we need to be secure. It's in our name. So and, and we got that using Calico. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so there is uh, some specific features that uh, are pretty good for us and the, the SEC team was happy with, which is um, the concept of security group is one of them. Uh, on the past, we had um, like a, uh, a network with segregation. We had uh, some VLANs, we have manual stuff running, but it was not uh, as fast as we needed at that moment because we were growing fast. Uh, when the project started, we had, uh, I mean, just a few teams on the company and then we have a, a close to hundreds of teams, so uh, they deploy a lot, so we needed something that grew fast. And the network at that moment was not uh, dynamic as we needed. So this concept, like uh, based on code and based on uh, things that we could version and we could deploy in any environment that we were running was something really good. And we could plan the security groups because at that time we had a provider, uh, which is a uh, company that is like sister of our company. And this company works for another companies on the country, but they are more generalists. And we needed some 
some specific solution. So for us, it was easier to get that on our hands. And, and one interesting, interesting thing is that uh, we are talking about the, uh, some legacy infrastructure where you ask something to be done in the security roles, for example, I need to access some servicing, some ports, and I don't know how, ma how much it takes in your company to have that applied, but we had things like weeks. I asked for some access, weeks later it came, they okay, when you try that thing that doesn't work and you need to reopen the incident and so on. So we need this faster process and the more controlled one and this concept of security group was uh, the key thing that gave that to us. Yeah, exactly. And, and in the other side, we started to, as I said before, the first cluster used the, 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 the common way where you would spin up a task and <clears throat> do some port mapping to connect to your task. Uh, that, that works, but it's, it's really very different when you have one IP per task. And uh, I, I'm, I'm talking about using simple service discover like DNS without doing SRV record calls. And uh, you know exactly in what port your application will be running which thing. For example, we had one application that was up in, in two ports in our setup. And we didn't know exactly which protocol each port was running because it was random ports. So we need to do some hacks and try to connect one or to the other port using SRV record calls. And having one IP per task, it was just simple. You do a simple DNS call and use that port you already knew. And there is some very other good benefits. For example, we were debugging. Oh, that's not specific about one IP per container, but uh, it's related. Uh, but debugging became something very trivial. You might do a TCP dump in a machine and you know what IP address is doing the call. So it's very, very easy to debug. The common setup, it was just tough. You, if you have one single machine receiving calls from a lot of machines running the cluster, who, what process are doing this call if I have 15 process running inside sandbox? Yeah. And it's, it's really better for debugging. I guess that's the point. Yeah. It's easier to debug. It's easier to keep control. It's easier to uh, see, OK, this IP is from that uh, data center. So this application is connecting from this one to that other, you know, that kind of debug stuff. Uh, this is uh, an, an, an example on how Calico works. It, it is a router running on the, the, the host machine, the, the machine that runs Calico itself. So um, it adds some routes to specific address, which are running on other uh, nodes. That way, the, the containers running on that machine can connect one to the other and know where is the, the application running. Um, it is based on BGP, as uh, Diego said. So when you need to like uh, plug Calico into your network, you can use this protocol to, to, to do that running. This protocol is for decades running on yeah, it's the used internet. in the internet. Yeah, so. exactly. That's that's how internet works. Uh, the Calico is an uh, AES, so every node knows the AES that uh, is uh, set it up on the, the the main controller, and then they all uh, peer BGP between each other. Uh, this is also something that enables us to connect to other uh, houts. Uh, we use it, um, a network figure called a uh, hout reflector, which we use to connect this whole cluster to our own data center. So uh, using one firewall that was uh, doing that job, we were able to connect the IP that were running on 
one specific container to the data to the data center, and then we were able to get an application outside the cluster. I guess that's on the yeah the the, the next slide. And, and there, there is something interesting here uh, again talking about the legal system and uh, networking configuration is some something that you fear. I don't know if you have that big uh, I don't know holder seated somewhere. And you, when you ask someone, to, hey, change the one configuration or add the one holder, the guy just freezes. I'm not crazy to touch that machine that's there for century. Who is the craziest guy to touch that? I need an RFC to do that. Yeah, I need to, for you to ask to some bigger guy, yeah. And uh, th this was a challenge to have this uh, hardware, this firewall. And uh, as, as I said before, when you have your own data center, you have a lot of good things but to have a lot of bad things to handle. For example, we need to find space to put a new firewall inside our data center to have the right configuration to put the message closer to communicate with the rest of the infrastructure. And, the, and that is the kind of situation that you need to handle it when you have your own data centers. Yeah. So on this next slide, uh, there is a... Uh, <coughs> A diagram showing how do the the containers connect to the outside world. Uh, we have a container that be running on the the Mesos cluster. Oh, actually, A, B, C, and D running on the Mesos cluster. Uh, when B needs to connect to C, it goes uh, to that those hearts that were shown on the, the previous slide. But when the C container needs to connect to the legacy system, it goes through the hot reflector, which is connected to our uh, BGP on the, the data center and the aggregation and all that, that network stuff. Um, you have the applications knowing each other with all the features that you've seen on the, the previous presentations, uh, service discovery, etc. And the outside world connects to, to the, the, the containers. It can go straight to that IP address and port. Yeah, one interesting part is that it's possible for you to have a mix of the workload using your new infrastructure with the legacy system, mixing uh, some aspects from each one. For example, uh, here in the Zaligas database, for example, uh, if you see, we don't have that uh, tube going straight to there because we weren't able to use Calico in that machine that was out of our range. The database guy called us crazy, and we said, okay, let's do the old ACL process, ACO process, and when we get out from the, the Mesos cluster, we are in an old secured fashion config network configuration with your routing and IP. And that's one, another point to the one IP per container. Calico has an IPN, and then when you uh, start a container, it gets an IP of that uh, specific hole that you say. Uh, the network team can match that yeah. IP, and then the, the ACL is there running, and you, need, you don't need to ask again for that thing to be running because it is uh, constrained on uh, the Calico. Uh, this is an yeah. example of how do the developers uh, can um, use the, the, the Calico to uh, say what uh, applications it goes to connect and what it needs to, to, to pay attention, what people need to, to take care of. And uh, here we have something very interesting. I tried to show that mix of sec devops. And we have different roles playing in different time. For example, in the right side, we have some configuration that's done to, into Calico itself, in the, in the Calico network. It's uh, in the right. That, right. You're right. Okay. They're left. <laughs> the sample Calico configuration, yeah. <laughs> And if you see, we have more sec, less dev, and more ops working in this configuration. Uh, it's a rule that you define how connections go in, in your cluster. For example, uh, here we have some sample 
configuration, and I'm saying, Calico, please. I have a MySQL DB sample, and the destination, and anyone that wants to connect in this thing goes to the, is allowed to go to the destination uh, number above in the right port and apply this role using this kind of selector. Anyone that wants to use a database called MySQL DB sample. This and is a quite open ACL actually. Yeah, Maybe yeah. security team haven't paid that much yeah. attention to that. Uh, don't, don't show them. <laughs> And the interesting part that we might uh, have source configuration to restrict which application might connect to this database. So we have a framework where the, the security guys might point which database has specific access control rules and how to apply that rules in uh, the cluster itself. There is uh, one thing that, that is worth it to say. It, uh, it is that uh, all these configurations are plugged in the CI and CD process. Yes. So when uh, some DevOps or sysadmin or whatever uh, set up a new ACL and then he will uh, send a pull request to the security team, the security team will dare and say, it's okay, it can, it can go or it cannot. And it, it is like plugged in straight into the, the Jenkins itself. Yeah. We, we never touch production. We let Jenkins touch production for us. And in, here in the Martin configuration, you need to put some labels to uh, instruct to Calico how to, what the rules to, needs to be applied to this task. And for example, this simple configuration, uh, I have an app called my service name. It's my name, the name that I'm registering. And I need to talk to other apps. I need to talk to database. I need to talk to infrastructure, legacy infrastructure, usually. And then we have the environment set up. Set up. Uh, the Calico will apply the right rules in the right place using IP tables and kernel things. And it, it's interesting that it's applied to both sides. In the side of the client, that is open the connection in the side of this server that's accepting the connect. So we have uh, two point verification of uh, sec security. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we, I said that we have our own data center. Yeah, we have, but uh, we are not uh, uh, as scalable as we, we would like to be in our own setup. And when we need things in a, in a hush, uh, we always need to do some kind of negotiation internally to have some more machine or some more space here and there. Uh, so the uh, extended to the cloud was something very uh, straightforward in the path we were going. Yeah, when you have your own data center, you are never as fast as a cloud uh, yeah. provider. It, it is impossible. It, it is not your business to have a, a, a cloud system running. So you're probably going to get messed with some CapEx or uh, discussion regarding money, and it's pretty easier to like just extend to the cloud and run on AWS, Azure, or something. Yeah. And it, it is a, pro a project that we started in the start of the year, I think January. Yeah. Beginning of the year, yeah, and we have some teams working, and the idea was to have one extension of our own data center to some cloud provider. Uh, we have, as I said before, we have three data centers, and all the communication is uh, something very fluent and very directly. And we started to search for a way to have this kind of malleability and uh, configuration uses some server provider and they use their capability of extending in some more or less QA. Yeah, scaling, exactly. Yeah. So this is the diagram of the, the solution we came up. Um, we had on the your left side uh, our cluster running on the in-house data center. Uh, it has BGP between the nodes and uh, all those rules we were talking about. Uh, that firewall just after is the hot reflector we uh, deployed. And then on the right side, you have the AWS account. 
So we had the cluster running, we had everything running smoothly inside the, the AWS, uh, but we couldn't connect the, the Calico using the, the VPC router, the AWS router, because it was not made to do that. It's not AWS fault. Just this, of, of course, again, uh, who here is familiar with the AWS things and names and so on? Okay. Right, good. So we decided to deploy uh, a firewall by ourselves to do the same thing that we made on our own data center. So we had both uh, infrastructures uh, talking to each other using a VPN connection. Is that one on the, the middle? Uh, and to make the clusters talk to each other, we deployed a MicroTik uh, instance. Uh, it's a pretty good uh, router. It's cheap, which is pretty good. And it works. There is, but that, that's the best combination, cheap and works. And uh, we use it the MicroTik as the hot reflector inside the AWS account, and we connected the, uh, both of them, passing through the VPN connection, um, and seamlessly, like, one node on one side knew the hot to the other side by using the hot reflectors we used on both sides. Uh, uh, and, uh we had a more, a very, a more difficult diagram than this one. We simplified a lot of things. But uh, here is the applied. Here, here we have infrastructure as code applied. When I saw the, the work that Network Guy did with the help from the Amazon guys, I was just shocked because when you spin up new machines in our AWS cl cluster, it's automatically connect and the configure MicroTik to, to, to do the right routing. And we also have some very, very resilient system because we were in more control using BGP, for example. As I said, we have a direct connect, but we also, we also have v, uh, VPN and we have something redundant between regions, between our, our two or three dat data centers, I think we are connected because this uh, diagram we will just explode. So we have more uh, from one cup of this AWS thing and more three cups of that our data center things. And that was this uh, fluently communicating without any point of fail. Yeah, exactly. If you kill something there, they will find a new route. Uh, if you have some problems in your direct connect configuration, they will go through the internet using VPC, VPN. Yeah, this is a simplified version of yeah. the diagram, obviously. Uh, but yeah, uh, and all this stuff after one or two months of research, uh, it ended it ended up being a simple solution. But it works, and now one container on our in-house data center can connect to the container on the AWS, and then we can make the, the two containers know each other. And actually, uh, the solution uh, we are using to make not only the containers, but the data center itself to yeah. connect each other, and then we can run not only Mesos apps, uh, Docker apps or whatever, uh, on the AWS, but we can run uh, normal applications uh, that we could uh, set up on the on premises on the the in-house data center on the AWS and make them connect to each other. And and, and this is very interesting. I don't know that if the diagram is talking about itself, but but uh, in Calico the other task is the next hope. You will send a package and the destination will be the next task, the task you are you are looking at. And in this case, we are talking about we have one thing running in AWS that can talk directly to one thing running inside our data center without net or overlay or anything like that. So as I said before, debugging is something just simple. 
you can dislog the IP address of the client and you have the connection between the caller and the Kali. Uh, things are starting to be a mo much more simple. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, we have just five minutes left, so any question? Yeah. You're talking, uh, you, you, okay, uh, he's asking if we are using BGP uh, just to not go to the public internet. Uh, not exactly, we, we wanted to have the same setup on both the centers. Uh, actually, we have that running on two of our own and then on AWS. Uh, we are using the VPN to don't go via public internet, but that's, that's uh, the, the gotcha. And, and BGP is something very Calico, uh, Calico use that. When you uh, spawn a new task, for example, it uses BGP to propagate the routing information. And we, uh, as Akas said, said, we are using BGP to have one single solution that we know that work at local in a large scale. Uh, he's asking what kind of encapsulation it is running. Uh, it is not VXLAN uh, for certain, I, I know that, but I don't know exactly uh, what is. If you, if you want to know, I can get your card yeah. and I send to you. I ask the network team. I, I, I know that it's not VXLAN because we were talking about that uh, a year ago and then people said, oh, we are not going to use this by now, but it maybe in the future. Any other? No. Well, we need to say thank you. Yeah, thank you very much.